Good evening, Martial and Carlos. Welcome to today's class. Hi, good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. How are you doing? How was your Friday? I'm great, but I am driving jet to my home. Okay. Um, yeah, traffic is crazy on Friday. Okay, no worries. Drive safe. Yeah. Let us the know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the traffic in the street, the short is horrible. Oh, yeah, I imagine that I... It was like that for, since, uh, like, from 2 p.m., I guess. Yeah, it was heavy. It was early and it was heavy. <laughs> and yeah. now it's, I, I imagine it, it be, it's getting worse. But, yeah, but I'm going to listen, listen to your class. Okay, thank you so much for coming and try to say. Okay. Hmm. Welcome, Aymara, Francisco, Marilyn, and Carlos. Uh, we're going to start the class. Let me share my screen with you. Um, oh, okay. So you're driving, and Miguel is driving. Uh, Francisco, uh, you still a listener, I guess. Uh, I don't know about Marilyn and Carlos. Are you at home? Oh, you're at home. Nice. I'm home. Great. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to start sharing uh, my screen with you. Just give me one moment. Okay, so yesterday we started uh, studying the passive voice in the present continuum and in uh, present perfect. Eh, la diferencia en la estructura es si es el present continuum passive. Es, um, vamos a usar el verbo to be. Um, is are luego being como ven ahí y luego el verbo en pasado participio luego como complemento podemos usar alguna frase que sea introducida por alguna proposición así como ven en el ejemplo ahí the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic Potholes are being repaired due to lack of funding. Eh, la voz pasiva en present perfect es la que hemos estado practicando esos días anteriores. Eh, sabemos que va con el auxiliar have or has, dependiendo del sujeto. Luego been y luego el verbo en pasado participio. Igual que el caso anterior, podemos eh, completar utilizando una frase o una oración que empiece con alguna preposición. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. The homeless have been displaced because of overcrowding in the city shelters. Okay. All right, so this is what we have in regards to grammar. This is what we are going to be practicing. So we can move to the next slide then. For the next exercise, um, we are going to complete A and B. In part A, we're going to match the photos of environmental problems with the sentences. And then when we complete that exercise, we are going to rewrite the sentences in part A using passive and the prepositions given, okay? Uh, for example, the health of people in urban areas is being threatened by air pollution. Uh, recordando, ¿verdad? Las estructuras, aquí estamos diciendo que 
la salud de las personas en las áreas urbanas está siendo amenazada por la contaminación del aire. Uh, entonces, vamos a desarrollar ejercicio A y B para la siguiente diapositiva. Primero, recuerda hacer match con las fotos y las oraciones y luego reescribir eh, las oraciones que tenemos ahí usando Passive Voice. Ustedes verán si van a usar Passive Voice en uh, Present Continuous o Present Perfect. Y aquí está lo que les mencionaba. Eh, recuerden que para poder editarlo, si lo van a hacer en su computadora, vamos a tener que salir de la pantalla completa y nos queda así. Luego uh, vemos la primera, uh, so I see kind of like, oh, the year cheap. Um, let me see all pictures. Number one, it says air pollution is threatened by, is threatened health of people in urban areas. Y ahí nos dice que vamos a usar la preposición by. Leaves that farms have contaminated soil and underground water because of uh, acid rain has eroded studies and buildings as a result of. Mm, okay. Oil spills are harming birds and fish and other marine life. When this would... Okay, for me, I think that. Uh, in the first picture matches the number two, sentence number two. Entonces, agarramos aquí donde dice annotate uh, text. Lo pongo aquí. Aquí yo creo que lo puedo hacer pequeño. Bueno, ahí la idea es que ponemos number two ahí porque match las oración number two. Ok, eso es lo primero que vamos a hacer, poner qué número hace match ahí. Y luego vamos a escribir las oraciones en Passive Voice. Para esta de las eh, granjas, eh, ok, la de la Air Pollution es la que ya está hecha. Y dice Air Pollution is threatening the health of people in urban areas. Y vamos a usar by. Pasándolo a voz pasiva, tenemos que empezar eh, con el, el, el objeto, ¿verdad? Que ayer definíamos cuál es el objeto. En este caso sería eh, la salud. Y como ven, así empieza. The health of people in urban areas is being threatened. Y estoy usando la preposición que me daba ahí el, el ejercicio. By air pollution. Entonces, uh, van a trabajar en eso y les voy a dar tiempo. Me dejan saber cuando ya estén listos.
Hello, Christina. How are you? Nice to hear that. Did you just join, Christina? Acaba de ingresar. Okay. Sí, ya. Eh, ayer. Estamos trabajando en esta parte de acá, lo que tenemos ahí en la pantalla. Sí, sí. Lo que vamos a hacer es estas dos instrucciones, están en la anterior. No las puse en la misma diapositiva porque así va a ver todo bien chiquito. Sí. Entonces las instrucciones son la A. Vamos a hacer un matching de las fotos de, que están ahí de problemas ambientales. Vamos a hacer un... Vamos a unir, o sea, vamos a... Si se fija acá, tenemos eh, las fotitos y tenemos las oraciones. La primera, por ejemplo, si quiero empezar con esta. Esta es esta, la de las ovejas, ovejas. La de las uh, granjas. Sí. Es Livestock Farm. Water. Entonces aquí voy a poner el número dos. Ah, ok, de irla señalando cuál corresponde a cada una. Uh -huh. Ok. Luego que termine eso, va a reescribir. Estoy en clase, sí, ¿qué querés? Perdón. No voy. <ríe> Sorry, bien. Uh -huh. Va a escribir ahí las oraciones en voz pasiva, así como tienen el ejemplo ahí. Ah, ok, ok. The sentence is in part A, using the passive voice. And the proposition given. Then, la, la, pues dice comparar, pero lo vamos a hacer en la sección principal. Y tenemos un ejemplo ahí de la sí, de. Sí, sí, eso está en, la, está en, el, en, el, en el manual, ¿no? No, eso está en el, en el PowerPoint, en la presentación. Sí, que ahí no, no, nunca he entrado, no sé cómo entrar ahí. Ah. Ya, voy, ya le voy a preguntar a mi hijo que me ayude a entrar ahí. Para... Ah. ah. Pero sí, uh, sí oh, porque lo mandé a WhatsApp. En WhatsApp ah, es que ah, no lo puede no. ver. Ah, pues no, ya lo voy a ver ahí. Sí, ahí, ahí lo mandó, ahí lo voy a ver yo. Gracias. Entonces, ok. Sí, aquí es. Fija, estamos con la número uno. Dice, that, dice air pollution sí. is threatening the health of people in urban areas. Y tenemos que usar la preposición by. Entonces, primero identificamos el objeto, que ya dijimos que es lo que recibe la acción. Ayer estuvimos viéndolo. Sí. Uh, it says, air pollution is threatening the health of people. Entonces, el objeto sería la salud de las personas, que es lo que está siendo afectado. Sí. Y empieza sí. la oración. The health of people in urban areas is being threatened by... Air pollution. Ahí Air está pollution. la preposición by, que era la que me sugiere acá. Mira. Ok. Sí, sí. Ajá. Entonces, the health of people in urban areas, aquí está, is being threatened, está siendo amenazada eh, por eh, la uh, contaminación del aire, ¿verdad? By air pollution. Y aquí, como si se fija, estaba en is. Ahora las que están con have van a llevar, aquí están las estructuras, si las recuerdan ayer. Si ven que dice is o are, alguna forma del verbo to be, es que van a usar la estructura del presente continuo. Okay. Y si tienen el auxiliar have or has, van a utilizar la estructura del present perfect. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok, teacher, gracias. Okay.
Teacher. ¿Qué es, Cristina? Una pregunta. ¿A dónde tengo que ingresar para ver la tarea? Eh, en WhatsApp. No, no, no. Aquí en la página de inglés corporativo. Aquí en la... No, este es material adicional. Ah, no aparece ahí entonces. No, ese no. Uh, ese pero es para yo... los demás que a veces este publica ahí, sí, ¿verdad? Algunos. Mm, no, ahí solo. Ah, okay, y todo eso, no, tampoco. Ah, sí, al, es el, el PDF. Cuando es el PDF, es el, el libro de que es la guía de Insafor. Uh -huh. Y ahí como ingreso. Eh, ¿Quiere hacer la tarea de ahorita o necesita? No, no, el... no, solo para saber, solo para saber. Para okay. yo hacerlo cuando no tenga clase. Ok, déjeme dejar de compartir para mostrarle okay. los pasos. Ok. Que si está ese material ahí lo tengo que aprovechar porque no, no lo estaba haciendo. Ah, ok, perfecto. Te comparto aquí. Ahorita está cargando la pantalla. Ahí tiene. Ve aquí, es donde tienen el... el... Se ve bien chiquitito, bien pequeñito. Ahí no se lee. Mm. Bueno, de hecho no, no se lee. Estoy en la plataforma, no, no puede verla. Y... Dice intermedio 2. Sí, hoy sí, hoy sí. Va, entonces se va. Pero creo que como la moví toda. Déjenme Al ver. curso tengo que irme. Al curso. Donde dice curso. Oh, oh. No, déjeme ahorita voy a mover acá. Aquí donde dice Students Manual. Ahí le da okay. clic. ¿Cómo dice? Student Manual. Ah, okay. uh -huh. Y ahí está. Estoy... Ahí puedo ver todo, vean. Ahí está el manual y aquí pues usted le da si lo quiere descargar. Cuando él termina ahí le va a dar la opción de descargarlo. Teacher, pero es que el manual sí yo lo tengo impreso. Yo digo dónde salen lo, lo, algunas, algunas este, páginas que usted nos comparte. Eso es solo en WhatsApp, se los mando. Ah, solo en WhatsApp. Ah, bye. Uh -huh. Porque el man, solo el manual es el que viene aquí, ¿verdad? Sí, solo el manual. Ah, no, el manual sí yo lo tengo. Yo pensé que había algo adicional ahí. No. Va, está bien. Gracias. You're welcome.
Are you done? Finished? Creo que las figuras quedan en orden de izquierda a derecha, dos, seis, cinco, uno, tres, cuatro. Let me know if you finish, if you want to share a screen or if you just want to um, share your word uh, verbally. Sí, Chari, el, el segundo cuadrito que es madera, madera cortada. La segunda foto. Ya, yeah, son árboles talados. Ajá. Árboles talados, ok. Y el tercero son casas, que ven ahí. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Ok. Y el quinto es una estatua. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay.
teacher. Yes, Mario. Uh, the picture number one with the number two. Sentence number two. Excellent. Uh -huh. Picture number two. Sentence, sentence number six. That is correct. Picture number three with sentence, sentence number five. Excellent. Uh -huh. Picture number four. Sentence number one. Correct. Picture number five with sentence number three. Correct. Picture number six with sentence number four. Awesome. Fantastic. Yes, that's correct. So you match the picture with the sentence correctly. And have you finished the sentences into passive? Uh, no. uh, number two, uh, soil and underwood weather has been contaminated. Because of? Because of the because of life life farm. Excellent. That is correct. So you say uh soil and underground water have been contaminated because of livestock farms. Excellent job. Do you have the number three? Only number two. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Does anybody have the number three or do you need more time? More time. Yes. Yeah. Ah, pardon. Sorry. Okay. Have you finished, Christina? Yes, teacher. Uh, Creo que concuerdo con don Mario. Um, la one sería este, la... Ah, de las pictures. Ajá, la... ¿Qué no es? La four, donde está la, la muchacha ahí con mascarilla. Sería la... La tuve. La una. Uh -huh. La... Perdón, la one, la one. Perdón, la one. Y este, ¿dónde están las ovejas? La tú. Eh, ¿Dónde está la estatua? La tri. tri. Um, ¿Dónde están las aves? La four. Y ¿dónde están las casas? Five. Y ¿dónde están los árboles cortados? La six. Ajá. Uh -huh. That's correct. Ok. okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, number three, statues and buildings has been eroded. Has been eroded as a result of acid rain. Yes, only one detail. Saluna cosa.
Okay. Um, so for number three, you said is status and buildings, right? Status and buildings. Uh huh. Has. Has for Has. St status and buildings. Have an order. An yes. Order. <laughs> yes, have. Cambiamos a have. Um, have been. Porque ahí en la activa hablamos de la lluvia ácida. Entonces, como solo la lluvia ácida, has. Pero cuando movemos el objeto y el objeto es plural, entonces el sería have. Status and buildings have been eroded as a result. As a result of acid rain. Excellent, Maria. Uh, yeah, Carla, I know Sabia dicho Carla have. Yes, stairs and buildings have been eroded as a result of acid rain. Excellent job. Y ahí las vamos poniendo en el chat. That is, yes, we have done number one, two, and three. Let me know when you're ready with number four. Okay. Teacher, yes. In, in, in number four, I think beer, fish, and other small life have been true or feels by harming. Um. No. <laughs> no. I'll go. I'll go on the uh, this. Uh, okay. Fish and other marine life. Are, have been, have been, are, are been, ajá, porque como, son ellos, son varios, son las have been, ay, todavía me dicen que estoy un poco afónica, have been, bueno, vamos a hacer la pasiva con eh, el continuo, Ajá, uh -huh. uh, recuerden que son, ok, si va el verbo to be 
is or are, entonces vamos a usar el passive continuous, present continuous passive. Ajá, eh, vamos a poner el verbo to be, luego being y el verbo en participio. Si vemos que está con have, entonces vamos a usar el present perfect passive. Y en el caso de esta oración, la 4, está con el verbo to be. Quiere decir que vamos a usar el present continuous passive. Fish and other marine life are being. Y luego de being, ¿qué sigue? El verbo. Si ven después de being, va el verbo. En este caso, el verbo es hard. Uh -huh. Están siendo eh, lastimados, digamos. Entonces, la oración eh, nos queda así. Fish and other marine life are being harmed through oil spills. Ahí se las dejé en el chat. Y ya podríamos movernos a la número 5. Esa sí es eh, con present perfect passive, porque ahí está el has. Present perfect passive. Y la 6 sería passive with present continuous. Uh -huh. Okay, time. Let me know when you're ready.
Ready with the number five? Okay, let's identify, uh, remember that the object is going to be first here, and this is going to be in the present perfect passive voice. So uh, it says the drug of silver has been eaten a huge amount of formula. ¿Cuál es el uh, object? Huge. Farmland. Uh -huh. Huge amount of farmland. Después, eh, el auxiliar sería have or has? Huge amounts of farmland. Sería have. Is it excluded? Yes, excellent, Abigail. Have. Luego escribiríamos been. Huge amount of Has been eaten. <laughs> Been eaten up. Do has been eaten due to or como se dice? Due to the ground, the ground of so words. Ay, Mara, así nos quedaría. La chat para que la puedan. Uh, there, huge amounts of farmland have been eaten up due to the ground of supper. Let's do the number six. Construction of rainforest is accelerating the extinction of plants and wildlife. Y tenemos que usar by. Para esa la estructura, como vemos que ahí está el a verbo to be y no hay have or has. Entonces, esa iría con la estructura del present continuous passive. Siempre vamos a identificar primero cuál sería el objeto. ¿Qué sería? The extension of land. Uh -huh. well, like. Excellent, Mario. Sería the extinction of wildlife the extinction of plants and wildlife is they being or, or are Ajá, sería are, porque estamos hablando de dos cosas. The extinction of plants and wildlife. 
are been mm -hmm. are been luego uh, accelerate accelerating the destruction by offering for it. no <laughs> As okay. accelerate accelerate mm -hmm. are being accelerating ahí pondríamos el by by are being accelerating by the destruction of of right water the destruction of uh -huh. excellent thank you so much mario and aymara Y yes, así nos quedaría. The extinction of plants and wildlife are being accelerated by the destruction of rainforest. Y les escribí rain así como se pronuncia, pero ustedes saben que es rain, así se les escribí de nuevo. Rain. Okay. All right, good. So now, like, this practice at the beginning, al principio la práctica es un poco eh, lenta porque estamos viendo cómo se hace y todo. Es como que empezamos bailando despacito y después ya van eh, solitos, ya como que se, um, uh, uh, lo hacemos como en forma automática ya sin estar viendo tanto, pero sí requiere mucha práctica. Eh, pero muy bien, eh, están haciendo un buen trabajo con esto de, eh, de la voz pasiva, incluso estamos repasándola en presente continuo. Ok, I'm going to check attendance. So, let's say present. When you hear your names, Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Friday for in Okay, um Gail some Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Está malita de salud a lo mejor. Um sí. Abigail Mejía. Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Carlos Alberto Caso. Thank you, Abigail. Ya vi que levantó la manita por ahí. También. Acá. Y veamos el chat. Thank you. Abigail Elizabeth and Abigail Mejía. Thank you so much. Carlos Alberto Castro Santana. Present, Miss. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Coto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present, teacher. Thank you. Luciano de Mil Ramos. Francisco Ernesto. Gerson Alexis. Thank you, Cecia. I see that you wrote in the chat. Let's continue. Uh, Gertrude Saimara. Present teacher. Hazel Vanessa. I don't see Hazel. 
Hazel Vanessa. Julissa y Amilet. Julissa y Amilet. Carla y Vania. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Luis Javier. Magdiel Esaú. Present teacher, I'm here. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Present teacher. Thank you. Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Victor Noé. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. Now we will continue with the next part. And this is a listening practice. So let me get ready with the sound here. Yes, we have to listen in here. Let me start sharing the screen for you again. Okay, um, this is a pronunciation exercise. The reduction of auxiliary verbs. So, vamos a escuchar cómo se... Um, ¿Cómo se pronuncian los, uh, los verbos aquí auxiliares? Is, are, has, and have. Vamos a escuchar cómo son reducidos. Um, y es por esa razón que a veces el inglés nos parece que es un poco rápido por este tipo de reducciones. So, I'm going to play the recording and I'm going to click on a pause button so that you can repeat at home if you wish. Let's practice. My sharing sound. Page 46, exercise 4, pronunciation. Reduction of auxiliary verbs. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the auxiliary verb forms is, are, has, and have are reduced in conversation. Fresh waters being wasted. Newspapers are being thrown away. Too much trash has been created. Parks have been lost. Let's listen one more time. Page 46, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Reduction of Auxiliary Verbs. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the auxiliary verb forms is, are, has, and have are reduced in conversation. Fresh waters being wasted. Newspapers are being thrown away. Too much trash has been created. Parks have been lost. Okay. 
Is everything okay with this pronunciation practice? Or you have questions? You want to practice one more time? Okay. No comments. I assume that everything is okay. Uh, we're going to move then to the listening practice. Uh, and this is it. Listening environmental solutions. You have this in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you have not printed it, you can um, work on your notebook. Remember that listening is an important and part of the skills that we need to develop. So what you can do is to write uh, or draw this little chart in your notebook and write the numbers one, two, three for Jenny, Adam, and Katie. Then write down the problems. We have landfills, electricity, air pollution for farmland, e-waste, water pollution. And after we check the problem each person talks about, we have to write what can be done about it. I'll give you time for you to um, draw this little chart in your notebooks in case that you have not printed the material. And then we're going to listen in order to complete it.
Okay, I'm going to play the listening. Remember to click, uh, well, check the problem each person talks about, and then what can be done about that problem. I'm going to play it uh, three times, and then we're going to check your answers. Page 46, Exercise 5, Listening, Environmental Solutions, Part A. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Check the problem each person talks about. 1. Jenny. Wait, don't throw that out. Why not? Recycle it. I've been reading a lot about how much trash we produce and what happens to all of it, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way to dispose of trash is by burying it in landfills, land that could be used by farmers to grow food and other things. The problem is that in many countries, the dumping areas have already been filled up, and it's hard to find places to start new ones. Of course, no one wants trash buried in their neighborhood, but it has to go somewhere. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. However, many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. 2. Adam I love my new phone, but I don't know what to do with my old one. It's so outdated. I know I shouldn't just throw it away. Well, you're right about that. Not disposing of electronic devices and other appliances properly is a huge problem these days. Not just here, but all over the world. Many people don't know what to do with their old phones, computers, video game systems, TV sets, refrigerators. There are dangerous chemicals in these products, and they have to be handled in the right way. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, E-waste is not going away. With all the new technology these days, there's more e-waste than ever before. The solution is just to dispose of it responsibly. The good news is that there are more and more e-waste processing centers where professionals take these products and separate them into their various parts. Many of the parts can be reused, of course. 3. Katie you know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not 100% pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve, but basically what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Page 46, Exercise 5 Listening. Environmental Solutions. Part A. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Check the problem each person talks about. 1. Jenny. Wait, don't throw that out. Why not? Recycle it. I've been reading a lot about how much trash we produce and what happens to all of it, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way to dispose of trash is by burying it in landfills, land that could be used by farmers to grow food and other things. The problem is that in many countries, the dumping areas have already been filled up, and it's hard to find places to start new ones. Of course, no one wants trash buried in their neighborhood, but it has to go somewhere. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. However, many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. 
Two, Adam. I love my new phone, but I don't know what to do with my old one. It's so outdated. I know I shouldn't just throw it away. Well, you're right about that. Not disposing of electronic devices and other appliances properly is a huge problem these days. Not just here, but all over the world. Many people don't know what to do with their old phones, computers, video game systems, TV sets, refrigerators. There are dangerous chemicals in these products, and they have to be handled in the right way. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, e-waste is not going away. With all the new technology these days, there's more e-waste than ever before. The solution is just to dispose of it responsibly. The good news is that there are more and more e-waste processing centers, where professionals take these products and separate them into their various parts. Many of the parts can be reused, of course. Three, Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not a hundred percent pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve, but basically, what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Page forty-six, exercise five, listening, environmental solutions, part A. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Check the problem each person talks about. One, Jenny. Wait! Don't throw that out. Why not? Recycle it. I've been reading a lot about how much trash we produce and what happens to all of it, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way to dispose of trash is by burying it in landfills, land that could be used by farmers to grow food and other things. The problem is that in many countries, the dumping areas have already been filled up, and it's hard to find places to start new ones. Of course, no one wants trash buried in their neighborhood, but it has to go somewhere. So, what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. However, Many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. Two, Adam. I love my new phone, but I don't know what to do with my old one. It's so outdated. I know I shouldn't just throw it away. Well, you're right about that. Not disposing of electronic devices and other appliances properly is a huge problem these days. Not just here, but all over the world. Many people don't know what to do with their old phones, computers, video game systems, TV sets, refrigerators. There are dangerous chemicals in these products, and they have to be handled in the right way. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, e-waste is not going away. With all the new technology these days, there's more e-waste than ever before. The solution is just to dispose of it responsibly. The good news is that there are more and more e-waste processing centers, where professionals take these products and separate them into their various parts. Many of the parts can be reused, of course. Three, Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, 
industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not 100% pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve, but basically what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Could you complete the chart? When you are able to complete the chart, did you get all the answers, all the information? Let's see what you have. Part number one, what is the problem that Jenny talked about? Land thieves and poor farmers. Yes, landfills. They mentioned the poor farmland, but this is like it was mentioned as a consequence. Or so yes, but the main problem he discussed is the landfills, and. Uh, uh, did you get the rest of the information? What can be done about it? Mm, no? Recycling. Uh, yes, recycling to reduce uh -huh, the amount of landfills. Uh -huh, very good. What was the problem in number two? Was it electricity or e-waste? E-waste. Excellent, e-waste. And what can be done about it? Mm -hmm. They mentioned that nowadays, well, maybe in, an, in another country, they have some places that they are specialists on um, disposing of this kind of materials, the of devices, right? So, yes, there are like uh, centers where they receive those um, devices to be treated properly. Here in El Salvador, I don't think that we have, no tenemos esos centros donde se dispone, hacen disposición de este tipo de desperdicios, creo yo. And what about Katie? Was it worried about air pollution or water pollution? Air, air pollution. Air pollution. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, Katie was talking about water pollution. Mm -hmm. That's insane. So, water pollution. Uh huh. And what did she say that can be done for water pollution? Creating a water product. Uh, yes. Oh, Trade wastes more carefully. Yes. Excellent. You did a very good job with this one. 
the next exercise that we have, let me uh, show you. For this one, we're going to use a dictionary. I think it's going to be necessary. Yes, let me find the, the presentation again. In the meantime, I cannot open it. One second. Okay, this is a vocabulary exercise about verbs and nouns. It's your screen. Hold on. It is still loading and it started to rain here. <sighs> All right. Here are that. We completed this listening and now we have this exercise. We have to complete this chart into the the verb and now or like for example here we have one it's already done for us the burn is contaminate that is the action the action or the verb is called contaminate the noun for this verb is contamination then we have here the verb we need to write the noun here we have the noun we need to write the verb and so on. Do you have any question about this exercise? No questions? I'm sorry, Mario? This is the education. Con contribute, contribute, the noun would be? No, 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 perdón, no. Okay. In, 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 in educate, the verb educate, the law is education. That is correct. That's, that's, that's the correct yeah, that I want to read. But... Educate is the verb, the noun is education. Mm -hmm.
teacher. Me fui a meter la ropa porque se acaba de venir una gran tormenta. ¿Qué vamos a hacer con eso? Okay, yes, it's raining heavy and many. Um, yes, I see that Ale, Mario, and others. Yes, okay. Um, yes, I see that it is raining in different um, neighborhoods. So, in this one, Cristina, vamos a completar este, este chart que está ahí. Ya sea, si tenemos el, el, el verbo, vamos a poner el noun de esa palabra. Si tenemos el noun, vamos a poner el verbo. Por ejemplo, aquí, el verbo o la acción es contaminate. El noun, el nombre es contamination. Ya Marito nos dio el verbo educate. El noun sería education. Y así. Puede que necesiten usar diccionario o algunas puedan eh, ponerlas ya con parte del vocabulario que ya tenemos. Ok. Y algunas fáciles ahí que no necesitamos diccionario. Ok,
Okay, so let's see. Um, any volunteer? You can either share your screen or um, let me know if you want to share them verbally. Now volunteers? Okay, let me let me show you the answers since and nobody wants you to share. <laughs> so we have here verb contaminate, noun contamination, verb contribute, noun contribution, verb create, noun creation, verb, deplete, noun, depletion, verb, destroy, noun, destruction. Then in the other side, we have verb, educate, noun, education, verb, pollute, noun, pollution, verb, populate, Noun, population. Verb, protect. Noun, protection. The verb, reduce. The noun is reduction. Do I hope you have the same answers? I hope you do. All right, uh, let's see if I'm missing anybody. Let's see. We're going to check attendance for the second time. And in that way, we're going to double check that everyone's being checked correctly. Um, Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Abigail Elizabeth Mendoza. Carlos Alberto Castro Santana. Present, Miss. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Humberto Estrada. Okay, thank you. Cecilia Noemi Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto. Person Alexis. Hertwood Saimara. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Panesa. Oh, no se conectó. En ningún momento entonces. Julissa Yamilet. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Luis Javier. Maciel Esaú. Present, Miss. Marilyn Alejandra. Creo que Marilyn nos escribió por WhatsApp. Y, uh, y está un Gracias, Marilyn. Gracias por confirmar. I know it's raining a lot. Uh, 
Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Samuel Antonio. Antes Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you. And Victor Noé. Present teacher. Present. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So what we finish that part and for the next exercise, we will need to uh, complete a paragraph. And before we finish today's section, let's see. Um, Anuncios, yeah, solo nos quedan unos. Um, okay. Yeah, it's really heavy. Wow. <laughs> Okay, ya solo nos quedan seis días de clase. Por favor, eh, complete la plataforma y cualquier duda o pregunta con un ejercicio, estamos a la orden. Háganlo saber vía WhatsApp. Y lo otro es si hay algún tema que quieren que repasemos, que reforcemos, pues lo hacen saber, porque ya casi estamos terminando con los temas del material, pues ya estamos en la sección 4. Y. Eh, son pocos, la verdad, los que no han completado la plataforma. Ya creo que un poco más de la mitad ya completó el mínimo requerido. Y pues hay algunos también que ya la terminaron, lo cual es excelente. Pero hay varios que aún no, no han completado. Eh, por lo menos ahorita deberían estar terminadas la sección 1, 2, 3, midterm exam y sección 4. Ya quedando pendiente solamente el examen final. Así es que, pues, los que no lo han hecho, la invitación a que avancen en la plataforma y cualquier ayuda que necesiten, háganlo saber para poderles apoyar. Eh, eso sería todo por el día de hoy. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy, rest, sleep well, and see you on Monday. Thank you so much, teacher. See you on Monday. See you. Take care. Bye. Bye.